Boom, baby, we are back, and we are going to be hitting some home runs today with my man, Dave Chesson. We're both sports people, and we were talking about that before the show, but this isn't about sports. There may be some sports metaphors, because you know I worked with the Lakers. You know I worked with Kobe Bryant. You know I helped 70 NBA guys sign their deal, but this is about Dave and his greatness within the book Space, and we're going to bring it to life today. So Dave Chesson is the creator of Kindlepreneur.com, a website devoted to teaching advanced book marketing, which even Amazon KDP acknowledges as one of the best by telling users to gain insight from Kindlepreneur on how you can optimize marketing for your books. Having worked with such authors as Orson Scott Card, Ted Decker, and more, his tactics help both fiction and nonfiction authors of all levels get their books discovered by the right readers. Dave, welcome to the show, my man. Yeah, thanks for having me. Of course, of course. So, you know, one of the things that I love about you is you've been around in this space for a while. <laughs> you've seen the changes. You've been involved in so many amazing projects. You've created so many amazing resources. And we're going to talk about those. But talk to me from this beginning. How did you get into books? And why did books catch your attention as the career that you wanted to be in? Yeah, well, actually, it was almost out of necessity. I, I wish I could say some like glorious, like I was just sitting there just dreaming of life. And no, it was um, I was stationed on the other side of the world. I was uh, serving the US military and they sent me over there without my family. And my wife was like, hey, um, let's talk about like an exit plan, you know, and finding some way for you to leave the military and come come and be home with us. Uh, I miss way too many birthdays, you know, and first words and things like that. So when you're on the other side of the world, like, what do you do? And I, we wanted to be entrepreneurs. We wanted to do something that would kind of give us that, that financial freedom. Um, and I didn't want to just jump from one traveling nine to five job to another traveling nine to five job. And so books actually became that real opportunity for me, because what's amazing about, you know, Kindle direct publishing or KDP is that once you write the book and you format, you get it put together, you can put it on the world's largest book market. And this, like, what's even better about this is that Amazon, you know, if you do certain things, will help to show your book to their customers. They'll take care of the logistics. They'll take care of if there's a, a return. Like, all of a sudden, once you set it up, your bank account gets money. And that's, you know, and you could start working on the next book or, you know, kind of do things to improve the sales. This allowed me in Korea to write whenever I wanted and, and do it like any other business. Like I'd have to deal with customer support, right? Well, I'm in Korea. Americans are sleeping when I'm awake, vice versa. Um, you know, I, I was also serving, you know, I was actually going out to sea a lot on South Korean warships. <laughs> you can't just, you can't start a business and disappear for like two months and expect the business to keep going. I could with books. So that was my first real big thing. And by the way, I'll say it this way. I wrote my first book on a South Korean warship. So yeah, you can write a book from anywhere. Um, but the second biggest thing for me was that while I, I just kind of got into publishing these books, I'll tell you this, I'm no Ernest Hemingway, especially back then. I, I could put together some good sentences, I guess. I, I didn't flunk out of high school English, but let's just say it wasn't my best subject. Uh, so I didn't have these illusions of grandeur where I could just sit down and write anything and people would be like, oh, my goodness, this guy's like amazing. Uh, so instead, I started asking myself, like, hey, how can I figure out the market? Like, if if I know that there's a certain number of people that want a book on this subject, OK, then I'm going to be more like I'm more excited about writing that book because I know there's a hungry audience for it. And so then if I could do that, I could create the book, put it on the market. And Amazon will connect us. And this is great. Um, and I love this process a lot better. I loved understanding where there was a hungry market that wasn't being served. And then I would serve them. And it allowed me to grow and improve as an author. Um, but the thing about it was not a lot of people, especially back then, were thinking in that, that frame of mind. And so I devised all of these tactics and techniques and math equations and Excel sheets, you know, and all this stuff to kind of help me to research the next topic, to understand the competition, um, to understand what makes Amazon tick. Why did they choose to show that book over this one? Um, and I, so I took all that information and I compiled it into kindlepreneur.com, my website. It's also the basis that I use to build uh, my book marketing software, publisher rocket, and a whole bunch of free tools um, was just 
taking the hard stuff out of the book marketing and just allowing writers to write and we'll help you with the easy parts. Dude, what a story. Like what a story. You know, I hear people tell me all the time, I, I can't write, like I, I have a newborn or I can't write, I have this. And I'm like, listen to Dave, like he, he wrote it on a warship. He wrote his first book, like you can do it. Hey, you just got to find a way and you got to be committed to the process. So there's so many good things in there and, and we'll kind of break through and talk about it, uh, all of those things throughout this conversation. But I want to ask you about this is you started making, you know, the resources. Would you say writing a great book is more important or marketing a great book is more important? Is it the writing or the marketing that's more important for authors? Well, you know, I'll answer that with a really good uh, anecdote slash true story. So Guy Kawasaki, you've heard of the guy, right? Um, famous author. Uh, he was up on the stage and he was given this presentation, you know, and everything like that. When he came off the stage, this lady came over and she's like, look, guy, I, you know, uh, I, I think your books are good, but like, I, I've got a doctorate in this and I know that my books are covering way more, you know, than, than yours. I'm giving more details and yet I don't get it. And he looks over at her and he's like, well, it's not because I'm a best author. It's because I'm a best selling author. And what this highlights is that Guy Kawasaki wrote good books. They weren't not bad. We're not dressing up a turd here, okay? Uh, they're good books. He just learned how to market it, all right? He took the effort beyond what this other person was doing, and he was able to get his book into the right reader. And I think that's really the big part to it. I think that's the key component. Uh, you could write an incredible book and just... And if you don't do marketing, if you don't do anything about it, it will lose. I got another story for you. And this one's another one, okay? There was this author and she, I mean, like was, you know, almost down and out. And she was constantly like uh, at the at the coffee shop writing her book. Matter of fact, like the first time she put the outline on, it was on a napkin, okay? Um, and she busted herself to, to create this book. OK, and she got an agent because she went the traditional route and the agent constantly, constantly kept going to all these publishing companies and they just kept rejecting it. OK, uh, she even changed her name a little bit in order to make it sound like, you know, like something else. Right. Um, and finally, on the 11th time, the agent said, you know what, I'm going to call in a favor. Like I'm going to this guy owes me something. I'm going to say, look, I need you to really look at this book, please. So the publisher said, all right, fine. I owe you a favor. Fine. But this is it. Takes the book, takes the first chapter and was like, I'm not reading this. Throws it to his 13 year old daughter and says, here, you check it out. Okay. 13 year old comes back uh, like five minutes later and is like, where's chapter two? And he goes, what do you mean? She's like, oh my God, this is amazing. Where's chapter two, dad? Guy looks down and he says, huh, Harry Potter. I might, you know, we might take a look at this. I said, this highlights the fact that here is what ended up being one of the biggest money makers in, in our lifetime. I mean, I think it's fair to say it is the biggest money maker of our lifetime. Okay. And how many people rejected it? If it wasn't that perseverance, if it wasn't calling in the biggest money making book of all time, never would have been published. If she had just written the book and left it to its own device, we would have never heard about it. So I like those two stories to kind of help people to understand that, yes, a good book is necessary. Like you can't, and I said it, you can't dress up a turd. Okay. That being said though, is that you can't, it's putting out a book and hoping somebody wins is like trying to play the lottery. Okay. And so what I tell authors, the best way to handle this is that I split my time. I split my time between marketing and writing uh, because some people will get so much into the marketing that they'll forget to write the next book or keep their you know author career going. Others will just get into writing and they'll they'll complain, why are my books not making sales? Um, so I designate a time period each day just for writing. And then I designate a time period for either conducting marketing or learning marketing. And I think that that balance makes a very healthy uh, author across the board. Dude, great stories. And, you know, I wasn't sure exactly where you're going with the second one. And then eventually it clicked and I was like, oh, I can't wait for the, the punchline to drop there. Um, so, so look, we, we talk about this marketing. I want to focus on the marketing side of this because we work with a lot of nonfiction authors, entrepreneurs, experts who leverage it for business growth. 
What are mm -hmm. some of the easiest ways when someone's getting ready to launch their book to get that Amazon juice, to get Amazon to pay attention to their book? Are there any tricks that you've learned over the years that really help market a book on its initial launch? Well, honestly, to tell you the truth, there are ways to gain without even the sales. Uh, I, I've got this example and I don't have the rights to be able to use a name. Okay, of the person. Uh, but this person was actually a specialist as a DUI lawyer. Okay. And um, in a certain metropo uh, metropolitan city. And this author had his paralegal just put together basically his notes that he uses because what's the one thing that happens? You know, somebody gets a DUI, they show up into his office, and what do they want to know? What's life look like? What's going to happen? What do I do next? So instead of just creating a little pamphlet or whatever that everybody else kind of hands out or some notes or an email or whatever, he compiled it into a book, okay? And he put it on Amazon. And what, what's crazy is, is that in order to be marked as a best-selling author on Amazon, it's ridiculously simple, um, you know, because all you have to do is sell more books than any book in a category in a day and you get the bestseller mark. Um, there's 14,000 Amazon categories. So I assure you, there are many categories that will absolutely fit your book. And some require like hundreds of sales and some require just two. So he hit the bestseller mark. Now here's what just 10 X his business was that when you're in something like lawyers, okay. And there's a DUI there, you have multiple competitors. You have lots of people showing up to the door and uh, everybody else, you know, how do you compare lawyers? Well, okay, this guy's got this really, you know, he went to a school I recognize or, oh, this guy has a really nice office or like, like, we don't know. You look at the price, you don't know if you're getting a good ROI or bad ROI, right? He, on the other hand, instead of handing a business card that somebody could throw out, he handed them a book that gave them benefit. And more importantly, it's super hard to throw away a book than it is a business card, right? Um, and so, and then on top of that, he's also a best-selling author on the subject. I mean, if that doesn't give you a major step up, I don't know what is. But here's where this guy took it even further, okay? Uh, because he was a best-selling author on the subject matter, he was always called in as the main speaker, okay? Anytime, even with, with Mothers Against Drunk Driving, right? Mad. Wanted him to come speak. Not any other lawyer, but him. Because he was a best-selling author, Okay. Uh, wasn't about the school, wasn't about his cases. It was, that was a mark that showed it. Okay. On top of that too, he developed an even large list of, because let's face it, you know, he only has the bar in a certain state. He developed a list of all the recommended, uh, you know, lawyers that somebody should look into. So now when somebody on Amazon who lives in a completely different state buys the book, they're using a link, they're going to that, uh, that lawyer and he's getting referral fee. Uh, so I'm just going to throw that story out there because that was one where this dude like 10 X his is not only his company, but his revenue streams. And it's not like the book sells like crazy, but boy, did it do so much for him. I mean, he's still getting some money from the book. Don't get me wrong. But that being said, though, that is such an amazing creative use of it. Now, his kicker was a couple of things. One, he knew how to make the book look good. Okay. I mean, let's face it, if you're trying to build up your not, you know, uh, through nonfiction or build out your your career or something like that, and the book looks terrible, <laughs> like it might be hurting your business than it is helping. Okay. Uh, so he knew how to put together an excellent book cover. Uh, he formatted the book where it was just beautiful. Uh, it looks absolutely professional. Like the guy looks legit. Uh, and then he knew how to do just a couple of things to make it where Amazon's like, oh, DUI, this guy, let's show him. Um, you know, and then he got the reviews because luckily it was a decent book. Like you don't want a whole bunch of one stars. That's going to hurt. All of those things together helped him to really move the needle on what he wanted most, which is propelling his business. So, you know, if, if you're doing that, I, I don't think that an author has to become the expert, but there are certain things that would absolutely go further than not. Yeah, dude, I, I can't wait for the book of just Dave stories. Like just, just write the book <laughs> on Dave stories, put it 20 of those and boom. Um, but here's, here's a controversial topic that, that people, you, you hear them talk about all the time is, you know, you mentioned that some categories are much easier to become a bestseller in and some are much more difficult. Now I use Publisher Rocket, which is one of your products and resources to help me identify what categories and how many books I'm gonna to need to sell in that category to hit number one. And we use this for our clients and everything. And it's an unbelievable resource. And so anyone, if you're trying to have an easier way to do this, go ahead and get and get Publisher Rocket. But people always say, well, oh, you're bestseller. What, what does that really mean? 
So what is your opinion on that? Because some categories, yes, it is easier. In some categories, it is much harder. But are you a bestseller nonetheless? And can you use that in your marketing? Oh boy, it's funny now you said, oh, the book of stories. I got a story for you. <laughs> so bring them, baby. I did, Come on. I, I did not intend to do this, but um, you know, when I was in the military, I had I had published seven books and they were just I was making more money from my books than I was from the military, right? And so I came from a family where everybody was uh in the military. My every every male and many of the females in my entire family all went military, okay. Uh, so my family's definition of success is, well, you do your 20 years, you retire and you get retirement pay. And this is awesome. Um, so when I told my family that I was going to leave the military after 11 years, right. Uh, and that I was going to pursue this whole writing thing. They all thought I had grown a horn out of the middle of my forehead and they thought I was being ridiculous. They could not understand it. And I tried telling them guys, I'm making more money from my books than I do from the military. Yeah, but it's only nine more years until retirement. I'm like, I could not get through them. I was getting so frustrated. So I said, and this is actually to my grandmother, my muzzy, that's what I call her muzzy. Uh, I was like, muzzy, look, I'm a best-selling author. Okay. Like I'm a best-selling author. And she flipped out. She thought that was a cool, like after all the things I told her after I, I've, published seven books and then I'm making more money than the military. She didn't care. She was worried. But the moment I said that it snapped and she was like, Oh, and you know what? I was the favorite grandson. Okay. She was talking about me to all the bridge girls. I mean, it was like, like my grandson's a best-selling author. And I'm like, but here's the thing though. Okay. We, when we get into the author mode, okay. And when you start to actually learn like what it takes to get that best-selling mark. Okay. It, it's sort of like, it's almost like pulling back the curtain, seeing the wizard behind the wheel. You're like, oh, okay. You're not the great at all powerful, you know, wizard of Oz. You're just some dude pulling some lever. I get that. We authors start to lose that when we see it. Okay. And we authors might actually judge other authors as well saying, well, I don't consider that a best-selling author. I, okay. But to the rest of the world, the person looking at your resume, the person looking to sign you as a, as a speaker, muzzy. Okay. <laughs> That's huge. That means so much. So I tell authors, like, I get it. We see, you know, the, the sausage making. We know what it looks like. I got that. But the rest of the world does not understand that. And so therefore, I think that that is something that we should consider, especially if your motive is to build your credibility. Uh, and it's not. And just to go back to the categories, just to help people understand, is that when you go to publish on Amazon, uh, Amazon will present you with a uh, Bisacks, okay, and these are like standard codes for standard categories. Well, there's only about five thousand bisacks to choose from, but like I told you, there's fourteen thousand Amazon categories, and so most people put themselves in a bisac category, which means you're entering into the most competitive categories in all of Amazon, and you may not stand a chance of hitting that mark. Now, I wish I could tell you that there was a list of all the categories. There isn't. Um, they don't exist. Uh, that being said, though, we had Publisher Rocket crawled and grabbed every category on Amazon. So if somebody has Publisher Rocket, they can literally go in there. They can check out and see every category that fits their book through a couple of different ways of hunting through them. And then you can immediately see how many books that day you could sell in order to be number one. And uh, it just takes the guesswork out of it. Now you can be added to those categories, one day of sales, and bam, you hit your mark. And like I said, uh, I get it. <laughs> it now that we know the sausage making, uh, it doesn't seem as appealing, but to the rest of the world, man, it can, it can be a real boon. Dude. But here's the other thing too, just because you know what's in front of you and that it's very, very doable. Do you know how many people release a book every single day? And do you know how few of them still hit that bestseller category? Yeah. Like there are so many people that are releasing books all the time and many never even get close because they don't understand how to switch it from bisects to adding your extra categories. They don't Bingo. understand how to make the differences. They don't know how to select the categories. I think category selection is one of the most important things you can do in the, in the publishing process. And knowing that once you go live, you got to add the extra categories. You got to switch them up. You got to make sure you're doing the right things, but it's still, look, I can tell you exactly what to do. Most people still wouldn't do what you tell them to do. Yeah. And that's, that's the other factor on this. So when we combine what I just said with, your great story with your grandma and everything you just said, there's still opportunity for everybody to win. And there's opportunity for everyone to win big, even if you know what to do. So thank you for another great story. I can't wait for the next one here. So 
you start creating these resources, man. Okay. You start creating these resources. We talked a little bit about Publisher Rocket, um, but you also have Atticus. Now Atticus, and I'm gonna let you explain everything about it here in just a second, but you have Publisher Rocket, which is really focusing on the marketing and the publishing side of things and, and the back end side of things. Well, Atticus is kind of all about the, the front end side of things, getting your book to publication. So talk to us about what is Atticus? Why'd you create it? And we'll dig in deeply on this one. Yeah. So one of the things that, that, uh, so I've really gotten into software development. Um, I actually own a one third stake in a software development company and being an author and having access to like incredible programmers has been like just this really cool uh, thing. I've just absolutely loved it. Um, and so one of the things I like to do, especially with Kindlepreneur is I'm constantly at, you know, writing and saying, man, wouldn't it be nice if, uh, and then next thing you know, I turn around and I get my team to kind of build this tool. So Publisher Rocket was created because nobody wanted to use Excel sheets and numbers and calculations. It's like, man, wouldn't it be nice if this was all compiled into super easy to use book marketing software? And bam, there it came. With regards to Publisher Rocket, um, it so it started off as, I guess the best way to describe it is a writing and formatting software, okay? So you can write your book and it's got a lot of tools to help you with writing and we're gonna come out with even more here in the future. But more importantly is, is that once you're done with your book, you can either upload your word into it or write inside of it, either way. You can just drag and drop almost, like you can click buttons to immediately make your book look the way you want it. Um, there are free ways of doing it. You can take like a Word document, then you got to do all these crazy things and you're going to be super limited in what you create, okay? Uh, and it's going to look it. It's going to look so basic. Whereas you can put it through something like Atticus and you can make the chapter themes look great, full bleed images, call out boxes, you know, all these aspects. Uh, oh, and footers. Oh man, you know, try doing that like the manual way. Um, and so- what this has allowed authors to do is effectively and efficiently make beautiful, professional-looking books. Um, and so that was one of our biggest goals. And uh, But truly, my absolute design, so we've come out with what I just discussed, but what I want to make is the software where an author would never have to leave, okay? Uh, when you look at the word book writing software, okay, most people think, oh, something I write in. But to create a book, we have plotting and outlining, we have writing, we have collaboration with editors and arc readers, and then we have formatting. Nobody does that. Most authors have to write in Word, email back and forth with an editor, and then upload to a formatting software. Or, you know, if you're a Scrivener user, you're, you're maybe outlining there, you're writing, then you're exporting to Word, emailing back and forth, and then, you know, uploading it into, you know, before us, one of the popular ones was Vellum. And then, so you're using all the software just to build a book. So, so to recap on that, right now, you can absolutely write, upload a book and format it and make it look excellent. That's for ebook and book. But in the future, we're going to have collaborations and all these other components so that an author can start their project on the one thing and go all the way through without having to leave. And that just makes file management that much easier too. Dude, this is game changing. So, so, so let me... I want to break this down because I don't think people recognize this, especially if they've never written their book before and they want to write one. Does Atticus eliminate the need for an editor or a formatter? Let, let's talk about that. And then I want to kind of dig yeah. into like overarching themes here, but does it eliminate the need to have to go pay and find somebody else for all of these different elements in the book? So uh, let's start with just formatting. Okay. Uh, absolutely. It eliminates the need for a formatter. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, a lot of professional formatters have been using Atticus as the tool. Uh, we've also designed it as a, I mean, I, we're going back to my muzzy. I've always called it when I, when I build my program, uh, I want it muzzy level so that my muzzy could get on it and start using it. Um, because we want it to be intuitive. We want the, bu the buttons to be where it is. And we also have it where you can see exactly what your book will look like in print and ebook form as you're going through. So none of this guesswork. Um, and truth be told is like, so Atticus is unlimited eBooks and books for 147, $147, right? A formatter could easily cost over that. I mean, most of the time starting costs can be that way. What's amazing about Atticus is, is that you can quickly learn how to use it. And then every con, you know, subsequent book you come out with, I mean, you're just saving money at that point. 
Uh, but what I love most though is say you send a book to a formatter and the person formats it, right? And then you realize, oh man, you made a mistake. Or say a year or two from now, you want to update the back matter to include your latest book. Yeah, you're going to have to pay that person again to just make some simple tweaks uh, or find somebody else who potentially will work on it. And that could be a problem. Uh, I know a lot of authors that won't update their book because they would have to go either A, the formatter doesn't do it anymore, and they have to find somebody that would accept that file format, and or they have to pay from, from the beginning and start all over, and they just don't think it's worth it. So in this case, though, you could open up your Atticus. Go to that book, make the change right there, and then just hit export. It's all good to go. So, so with regards to formatter, absolutely. So when it so comes I'm jump to an in, editor, I want to I want to jump yeah. in real quick on the formatting side of things. So I, I'm I'm going to take a story here for a second here. I'll give you a little breather, right. get your breath. Sounds good. When I was writing my last book, when I was writing my last book, I hired a formatter. The formatter was fantastic, by the way. But I hired the formatter and I send everything over to him. We go back and forth a bunch and eventually I'm like, okay, finally, it's, it's the way I want it to be. It's great. It's awesome. I, I upload it. I, I get my proof copy. I'm like pushing the deadline of when it needs to be launched. And so I can make sure I have copies ready for, for my launch party and I get it. And the, the font size wasn't what it needed to be. Somehow I made a miscommunication. I went too big and it was like, I was like, oh shoot. So now I'm panicking. I reach back out to the guy. Now I have to pay him again to change the font and to edit everything. And if I'm not mistaken, what you're saying here is that entire stress that I went through, those hours and hours and hours, the extra hundreds of dollars that I spent is immediately eliminated through Atticus because you can just instantly change that and see exactly how it looks right off the bat. Exactly. Yep. Just yep. open up the file, go to it, change the size. Yeah. And, and like it. And what I love again, is that you don't have to export it to see it. It's right there on the right side, exactly how it looked. You can even look to see what it would look like on a smartphone, on a Kindle Fire, on a paper white, on print. You could just click a button to change up the trim size because you just change your mind on it and everything magically happens and you know it. And then when you like the way it looks, flip through the pages, you know, right there in the program, great. Then hit export and you're good to go. And you could print it out so you could see it, what it would look like in the, in the actual book size as well. That's another thing that you guys have. Um, and if anyone watches the demo, you'll be able to see all of these features in action that's on your website. So, all right, go back. Let, now let's get into that, that editing side. I know I kind of jumped in there, but there's yeah. so much goodness in here. And I want to make sure everyone sees all of these amazing features and how much money this could save, but also how much time this could save you as oh, you yeah. write your next book. Yeah, well, when it comes to editing, though, I... I it really depends on the person. Um, if somebody is is truly needing to like cut corners or just you know pinch pennies or save up as much as they can, uh, then you could do the process of you m editing your book multiple times, getting your spouse to, your friends, your family, etc. The more eyes to see it, the more you'll be surprised how many how many mistakes keep getting found. Okay, um, and even a professional editor will sometimes miss them. Okay, I, I've got a couple of those. Uh, I still pay for an editor. Because it's just, uh, while there are tools like Pro Writing Aid and Grammarly, they definitely help. Um, I, I just really like having editors because it's also an opinion. They can read into something. They could be like, oh, man, uh, I'm a bit confused on the spot. Oh, you're right. I, As the writer, I didn't. I wasn't confused. Um, and so I still like hiring an editor. I don't think Atticus will eradicate that. We do integrate with ProWriting Aid, though. So for anybody who has that tool, it will work inside and help to find grammar or, uh, you know, issues, not just uh, spelling problems. And so, so there's that. But one thing I will say is that when we finally have the collaboration uh, component, uh, what it will end up being is you could send your editor a link. They can open it in their browser. They don't have to own Atticus and they can do it just like it's word where it's, you know, it's track changes and we're working with editors, to create little buttons and tools that they've always been looking for, but never thought about. And so then what's cool is you can open up your Atticus. So you'll be able to see real time that they're editing. You can see them. You can accept track changes um, just like that. What this will save you from is basically running into that problem of version control where most editors will only work in Word. I, I mean, I wish they would do it in Google Docs, right? Because then I get collaboration moment, right? Mm -hmm. Most of them hate them, especially the, the major professional ones, right? So in this case, they can open it. Feels like Google or it feels like Word Doc. Um, but when you're 
doing it with word you're emailing back and forth so you send a copy they make some changes you you know you go back and forth and what i mean if you ask any author what ends up happening is is that you start labeling final copy then all caps final copy then final final the copy then all caps this is the final and then final edited version and what's really dumb is and um, any authors listen to this you know you're gonna be laughing but we never delete them. <laughs> like it's almost rare to like, I think I have one out of seven books where I find I only have one word doc version and kind of find out like, no joke. The worst part about this was that that one is the wrong copy. I must've deleted the wrong, like the final, final, actual final. And so I'm missing the editing version to the conclusion as well as chapter 17 and 16, which sucks. But if only I had like Atticus back then, there would have been no, other copy there would have been no version control issues that and there would be the one and what i love most about how we're designing the collaboration when it comes out is that you can see everybody you've given some kind of capability to and you can immediately just remove their access by clicking a button so it's version control it's also just control of your assets um and you won't run into that problem dude this is so good this is game changing and knowing just like how innovative you've been in the space this is going to provide a lot of people with opportunities it's going to provide a lot of people with the ability to save money. It's going to provide a lot of people the opportunity to save themselves time. This is this is a great tool that is needed. And, and I'm thinking like, oh my gosh, like we can get our clients using this. There's going to be opportunities to collaborate at a much higher level. Like you're doing something that a older industry, like the book industry, has been desperately needing, especially as self-publishing becomes bigger and bigger and bigger in this in this world. Absolutely. I, matter of fact, the way that I'm seeing it is once we have that full gambit out, okay, and we designed the engine of the car already for it, right? We're now just building out the frame of the car, which is kind of a good way to look at it from the collaboration component. But when we have that out, um, honestly, this this will be like project management for publishing companies as well. Because then they can assign people to write and you know collaborate. They can bring in their editor when they want. We're also allowing formatters to come in as well. So you can tag the formatter to work inside of it. Um, and, and you can work with ARC readers. And so now imagine that you're a publishing company, okay? Or you're a uh, publishing firm or service. Like you can see where the status of every book project is and who is doing what and check it out at any moment. No longer do you have to call people like, hey, where's that, you know, such and such, or did you finish editing, you know, or anything? You just see it right there. So, and that, that's the key is, is that we're, we're in the publishing world, even the major publishing companies, they're still doing it the old, hard, tedious way of calling and finding out and hounding and then version control, uh, which again is like a red flag to most of them when you say that, like, oh my goodness, yes, we've all had our horror stories on that, so. Yeah, dude, no, this is this is great. So, so as we wrap up here, let's look five to 10 years ahead of the game. All right, you have Atticus, it's got all the collaboration, it's got every feature you've wanted. Self-publishing continues to grow and grow and grow. What do you see happening in this space um, that will give authors a chance to really build their brand and leverage their book for business growth? Yeah, well, I think one of the biggest things is that there's more and more information coming out, okay? And Amazon has really shown a lot of signs of life in terms of improving the systems. I would say like, you know, seven, eight years ago, Amazon, I felt like had abandoned us. Uh, you know, there was, there was create space for print and KDP for ebook, and they just didn't work together. Now there's just one, which is great. Or the dashboard. Oh, my Lanta. In order to actually look at your sales, it was stupid. Like I, 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 felt like a kindergartner put that thing together or something. It was terrible. We, you couldn't really tell what was going on with your sales. They've improved that. I think they still have some more to go on that, but it's way better than it used to be. Then they came out with Amazon ads where you, you can actually work to, to put your book in front of people. You can proactively pay and say, Hey, Amazon, uh, if you get someone to click on my book, I'll pay you 50 cents, you know, and now authors have more control. And you know, you've got Kindle Vela, you've got A plus content. What I'm seeing is, and if we mapped out all the things that Amazon's done over the years, there's a huge shift for them empowering authors, uh, you know, with more and more capabilities. And so if we're looking at five years from now, I'm seeing authors um, having even better capability of getting their book out there. And while, yes, there's more books uh, that will enter the market, but I think there's just more of a need for people knowing 
like we talked about buy sacks versus Amazon categories, um, you know, understanding what Amazon ads are, making their book look professional instead of the cheap quick way. Uh, these things will really separate the chaff. Do you, do you see with that? Cause I think you're so right. Do you see, you know, the traditional publishing houses combining or trying to take on Amazon from like a self-publishing perspective or kind of trying to find a way to get into the self-publishing game um, or hybrid publishing or kind of changing their landscape as we see more and more people go towards Amazon and KDP? Actually, this is one of my favorite um, kind of effects over the years. So I've been blessed to be able to sit uh, in the meetings of many publishing companies when they're trying to decide which authors to sign as well as which ones to really put their marketing behind, okay? And just kind of give some people some understanding of what this happens is they have a whole bunch of books um, and they've decided that for this quarter, they're only gonna accept like, we'll say 20, okay? But the truth be told though, is they really only want to give most of their marketing effort on two of the 20, Okay. So when you submit your book, they're going to figure out which 20 they select, and they're going to select the two that they're actually going to do the most work on. Um, now, what's interesting is that when self-publishing first started, the publishing company totally stuck their nose up in the air and they kind of looked down on self-published authors because to them, self-published authors are authors that can't hack it, you know, in the real book world. So these are fake authors. Okay. Um, and quite frankly, most of the publishing companies were like, "Ugh, I hate Amazon. I don't want to have to work with you. Um, we're going to do what we've been doing and Amazon will just go away. Well, it was only about a year or two ago that I've seen this really switch. And I think what's happened is a couple of things. Number one, the publishing companies have realized that Amazon is so big and so important that they have to really start learning this stuff, which is why they kept bringing me into the fold, you know, to like train and consult and things like that. They were like, oh my goodness, like, uh, we, what? We can't just do buy sacks? Like, I mean, seriously, like, because the buy sacks were set up for the publishing companies you know, a long time ago. So they're like, yeah. You're not just supposed to, like, you get so much more if you do these things. Oh my goodness, this is crazy. I didn't even know this exists, blah, blah. So they started realizing the importance of actually learning the market a bit, okay? But here's the real cool part. Um, their attitude towards self-published authors has dramatically shifted, okay? And what they've started to see is they've started to look at self-published authors as proven free agents, okay? So we're doing that book, that uh, sports analogy here, okay? You know, in sports, right, you get that the, the guy who is playing well, he's got a record. You already know what you're getting, right? Well, crikey, we have an opening. We need to fill this opening. So we're going to go to this free agent, and we're going to offer him a pretty good contract to get them to come play for us, okay? Publishing companies are doing exactly that with self-published authors. They're like, you, you know, you got this guy over here. And he's got a bunch of books and clearly the reviews show it's he must be a good writer, right? And on top of that too, they could see he's a best-selling author. He's got fan following. The reviews say these things. He's got an email list. Like, okay, so here's a dude that's got, or a gal or whatever, that has just proven their skill and capability, all right? Now, let's go back to the table, okay? I'm sitting at the table and I'm literally the person making the call, editor number one is like, well, here's book A. And I think this is a better book. But this author, well, never heard of them. No background. This is their first ever book. But their agent says it's really good. Well, then we got book B. Uh, it's not as good as book A, but this author uh, has published many, has a following, has an email list. And by the way, email list is like cha-ching in publishers' minds. It's just pure money in there. That You say, here's my Facebook following number and here's my email sign up or email signups. And they're like, ah. And all of a sudden the contract goes up. Well, guess who's going to get the sign, okay? Not the better book with the agent, the one that has a proven commodity. And so publishing companies have realized that they are getting better ROI working with proven self-published authors. And now they're actually starting to hunt them um, in a good way. They're looking not for the super famous ones because I'm already famous. Why would I sign a contract and lose my revenue when I'm doing it on my own? Uh, instead, they're looking for ones that are about to break out. And then they try to bring them in with the whole, but you're a published author and here's a contract. We'll give you money up front. And they're bringing them in. So I love this shift. We went from self-published authors are fake authors to, oh my goodness, we need scouts. We need talent scouts and go find me the next one. Dude, what a way to bring this episode to an end with the sports analogy and an unbelievable answer. So Dave, how do we follow you? How do we get access to all your amazing resources, Atticus, Publisher Rocket, and everything else that you offer on kindlepreneur.com? 
take us through everything and give us uh, where we can connect with you. Yeah. Well, kindlepreneur.com is definitely the best place. Matter of fact, if you scroll down to the bottom, there will be a contact me form there. Click that. Go fill in, ask any questions. If we covered something that you were unsure of, just hit me up there and I'll, I'll be more than happy to respond. Awesome, man. Well, I appreciate you coming on the show. And for everyone that's listening, Dave knows his shit. Simply put, the guy knows his shit. He's written so many blog posts. He's had so many people come on. Like if you need additional help in your publishing journey or your experience of writing a book or marketing your book, just go to his site, search what you need to search, spend some time on there and you're gonna have every answer you've ever needed. And it'll probably take you down the rabbit hole of all these other things that he's got on there because they're so valuable. And, um, you know, I just want everybody to go check Dave out and Dave, appreciate you coming on, man. Oh, well, thank you so much. And absolutely. And thanks for having me. Of course. It's been a blast. And everyone, I'll catch you next time.